Hi everyone, this is Ryan Hoime. I'm the director of the social media for Bon Battelle, and today we have Gloria Coppola, and she's also a Bon, B bon Battelle educator. Welcome, Gloria. Aloha, Ryan. Hi. <laughs> so today we're going to be discussing Lomi Lomi, and any kind of questions anybody wants to ask about Lomi, please feel free to ask in the chat, and I'll ask him of Gloria then. So to start off with, um, how, how did you get started in the whole massage industry then? started in the massage industry now, industry, oh, it's 25 years now. Um, I was working for a neurologist, and on Boss's Day, I thought I'd give him a massage because I met a woman at a business networking group uh, that was a therapist. And then I realized I was also a boss, so I booked myself a massage. And I was so intrigued with everything that was going on in my body that I decided to go to massage school, and the rest has been history. <laughs> and it's been a long history, too, right? Yeah, yeah. I did a wonderful, wonderful life in this profession. Um, my practice, I was really, really fortunate. I built it very quickly. I worked with a chiropractor at first uh, for a few months, and then I, I thank him for, you know, getting me started. And then within about six months, I rented my own space. And then about a year later, I took a, uh, a larger space of about 1,500 square feet and brought in other therapists and other practitioners to work with me and had a holistic health center. And soon thereafter, people were asking me about trainings because back in those days, there really weren't many schools and you did more of an apprentice program. So I began to apprentice some people and one thing led to another. And before you knew it, I had a massage school and... Uh, and now continuing education. <laughs> and how'd you get involved in the Lomi Lomi then? Well, Lomi Lomi found me. I moved to the island of Kauai uh, back in 1999, and I didn't have any intention of studying Lomi, actually. I didn't even really look into it. And I happened to be sipping a smoothie at a, a stand one day, and there was one little brochure there, and I looked at it, and I saw... Two, two faces on it of the teachers, the Kumu, and one of them I recognized, uh, the Hawaiian lady on there, actually lived in New Jersey. And when I had my holistic center, a lot of people said, oh, you have to meet Kuuipo. So here she was. And uh, I looked at the training. It was a month-long residential training, and it required quite the commitment and, of course, the financial end of it. And I wasn't ready for either one, so I put the brochure back. And then the next morning, I was taking a sh my shower, and I had this feeling that I'm really supposed to go to this training. So I went back to the smoothie stand, found the brochure. It was still there waiting for me. Called up, and Kuuipo answered the phone. And she's like, oh, my gosh, everybody's been telling me I had to meet you. So needless to say, I went to the training and found out that it was a lot more than I had ever imagined. And I equated to spiritual boot camp. So it was pretty intense then, mentally then? Pretty intense emotionally, <laughs> <laughs> physically, uh, spiritually. Um, two things that in, in ancient times the kahuna would ask when, when you were chosen for this work and you went on this journey was who are you on a deeper level? Who are you? And why are you here? Not in the state that you live, but why are you here on this planet? And basically what is your mission? So the trainings are evolved about your spiritual growth and um, also, you know, obviously we're learning body work technique, but the technique is described as the smallest piece of it. It's more about learning how to heal yourself. Um, it's getting in touch with what they call aina or nature, learning how to bring lokahi, which is the balance. And a lot of, you know, philosophies and religions have a, a triangle or a trinity, and lokahi is also based on that. And what that means is how to bring balance into our lives, like we were talking pre-interview <laughs> here, um, getting more time in nature. What are you doing with community, your ohana, your extended family, and your family? Um, and also on the top of the pyramid is your spiritual connection or akua uh, source, a uh, divine creator. And they believe that in those spaces is the ha breath, the ha meaning the life force, the ola. And when everything's in balance, there's a point above, above that triangle where we get what's called spiritual mana, the energy, the life force energy that keeps us balanced and going. And so there's, there's a lot. And if anything, this path has helped me with is how to bring that balance into my life and into my sessions with my clients. So is that your main practice um, is Lomi Lomi then? My main practice is Lomi Lomi. Um, and the other beautiful thing I love about Lomi, it's not one 
technique. A lot of people equate it to that beautiful forearm dance that they might see. And that's only a small piece of it. Lomi Lomi um, actually integrates everything, okay? There's a video out on Vimeo right now where um, Kumu Alva talks about what Lomi is, and he begins it with saying, you know, it's pretty much about 48 modalities that, you know, come in combination. So you might see things that look like Swedish, obviously, because those are the basis of massage. And then you might see things that look like Traeger with the rocking. You might see techniques where we're doing compressions and stretches that look like Thai, and so forth and so on. And the reason being is because there's no one school, and there's lots of canoes, as they say. So when the Hawaiians, you know, were uh, meeting up with other cultures, or if they left the islands and then came back and they visited, let's say, Philippines, okay? And they would bring back some of the tools and um, gifts that that culture had. And there's a lot of Philippines in Hawaii, so they've been married. And so that ohana, that canoe, has their style of, of lomi. And then maybe somebody was in Europe and brought back skills from that region or from Thailand or wherever. So you will see a vast variety of techniques that you know can come into the work. Um, Kumu Alvo even talked about cranial sacral work. Uh, you know, reading that rhythm and finding that balance within the system. So it's um, surprising in some ways that it encompasses all that, but it's beautiful. And as a, you know, I was a structural integrative therapist, you know, for a long time working in rehab with doctors and so forth. And then I studied, you know, cranial sacral up to the advanced level. So to be able to bring in all of that into this beautiful modality that is based in so much compassion and kindness and love just kind of wraps it all up really beautiful and nicely for me. And then Lomi Lomi in general, isn't it more, a little bit more secretive um, uh, for the techniques and the styles and everything else too? In a sense, yes, because you won't see, like students a lot of times, even on Facebook, will say to me, I can't find a DVD that shows me more than the forearm stroke. And you... I don't even think there's one Hawaiian that I can think of that has a DVD on Lomi Lomi. Um, the, and the ones that are out there are, are basic because there is so much that we have to learn in a sense, as you say, secret, um, that we're not going to put on a DVD. We're not going to share that because it involves a lot more of the personal training. There's martial arts involved or, the, or called Lua, L-U-A. Um, so we have to learn how to move in our bodies, we have to learn how to direct energy, we learn um, breath work, how to work with breath, how to read blockages in someone's body through the breath. So you can't teach that stuff, you know, on a DVD, and um, because there's so many ohana out there with so many styles, you're going to find a huge variety. And then it's usually passed down generation to generation. Do a lot of things get lost from generation to generation, would you say? or? Yeah, it does get passed down. You know, um, in my understanding, you know, years ago, a kahuna would take a chosen one from the family and spend 20 to 30 years training you in the healing arts. And that meant everything. So you had to learn about herbal remedies and how to use those as well, and how to work with salts and, and stones and, and all these things. And um, over the years, things have gotten lost, and there's less and less, you know, Hawaiians, pure Hawaiians uh, anymore on the islands. There is less of um, that, those secret things many years ago before the, the missionaries came to the islands. A lot of things had to go hush hush. They had to go underground. Um, many were killed. You know, many left the island. So nothing was ever written down. You know, they didn't have books and PowerPoint and videos because everything's taught through observation and talk story, just like we're doing today. We're talking story. And so if that stuff wasn't shared with somebody, it got lost. And somebody in the chat says, um, Isn't it great to be able to incorporate so much into what we do? Absolutely. Absolutely. It has been, I think for me, um, I love everything I've ever learned in this industry, every technique I've ever learned, but in this particular style, it is just so all-encompassing. And um, when clients get off the table, there's, there's like this wow effect. There's no words. I recently was um, doing some work on a person who was going to be a demo for something, and after the session, he said to me, 
I have had so much body work in my entire life. I've been a demo for a lot of different videos and so forth. He said, I have never experienced anything like that in my body. And he began to describe all these different sensations and feelings and energy moving through his body. And yet I was, you know, moving joints and, you know, following the body where it needs to be manipulated and opened. And, you know, it, it is because it's coming through source, Geakua, um, and we get out of our ego in the sense of thinking we know everything. I mean, ego is an important thing, obviously, but we don't know everything. And so, so much of this work is intuitive and guided on a much deeper level. And I can't explain it. Okay. It's, it's pretty amazing. Yep. And, and sometimes they will say like a chant beforehand and stuff. Can you explain a little bit about what a chant is and stuff and why they do it? Or Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the basis you know, of Lomi is what they call pule, it's prayer, and the chants are prayers. And so, you know, it might be just asking for guidance, you know, and wisdom and knowledge. Um, it might be just um, creating a sacred space, you know, and it could be one or more. And so there's a chant called Ehomai that many of us will learn where we're inviting in the wisdom of even the ancestors. And that is that is typical, similar to Thai massage, where they do puja, which is also prayer. And you see, you see these similarities in a lot of the indigenous types of bodywork therapies. And a lot of them um, will actually call other um, the older people elders and stuff, just like I call you my elder. Hey, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm proud to be your elder. Yeah, yeah that would be the kupuna. <laughs> they are the elders. They are the ones that. 60 and up, I'm actually not there yet, Ryan, but okay. I'm getting close. <laughs> um, yeah, so you kind of earn that right, you know, that you are a kapuna, that you've held knowledge and wisdom, you know, and it's similar to like our grandparents, you know, that now they pass down to the grandchildren what we've learned. And then um, there's a, a question. Um, let me see. I, I've seen it described as either light and relaxing, or is that, or can it be deep and therapeutic? Great question. Mm. It starts out for the most part light and relaxing, just like most massage typically does. In temple style, which is what a lot of people see the videos out there, those long flowing strokes that look really soft and light, they're really not after a while. And we typically spend about the first 15 minutes or so doing soft and light to actually get this parasympathetic nervous system to work. Because if you think about it, most people that come to you are in pain. And if you're going to apply deep pressure immediately, yeah, you might get some results. But what's really happening in the nervous system is everything is, is overcharged already. So the philosophy to relax that nervous system and to allow for everything to soften and open actually allows us to work on a deeper level without having to push so hard, without having to work, um, you know, where our clients are in pain, you know, from, from the tissue that we're pushing on. Um, so it's easier on us, which is why it saves, it saves us and we get longevity, obviously. And also you'll find that, again, all these techniques that I was talking about, You'll see a lot of the Thai kind of movements, you know, which are very deep and specific that might come through. A lot of joint movement. And if it needs, if the body is actually calling for specific deep tissue work like myofascial or neuromuscular, then we listen to it and we apply it. But I don't go into a session anymore saying, hmm, let me look at the structure of the person. Let me evaluate all this on a what I can see level, on a, a visual level. You're going in and now you're seeing with another eye, you know, kind of like your third eye, if you would like to say. Um, I close my eyes when I'm working a lot of times and I can see beyond the physical body. And the level of attunement that you begin to um, work with, heightened awareness or maka ala, is something that takes us sometimes years and years. I mean, I'm still working on it, okay? And, um, and in that maka ala, we will know exactly when the deep tissue should be applied to the body. And then is Lomi different in Hawaii compared to other parts of the world? Um, well, I haven't been all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> but what I find here on the mainland is it's, it's uh, for the most part, not with everybody though, okay? But for the most part, it's, it's approached more as like a spa, relaxing type of treatment. And that's not really traditional Lomi. 
Uh, sometimes Lomi has done seated massage. It's in a chair. Um, sometimes it's on a mat, which is the way it was originally done because, you know, way back when they didn't have massage tables. Uh, so, you, you know, temple style, you'll see sometimes there's limited draping for those long flowing strokes where in other styles you, you might have clothes fully on. Like Kahu Harry Uhaney does something called bone washing and you're fully dressed. You know, and he's working joints and he's using vibration and movement and, you know, breaking up what's what he's feeling in there, even energetically. And you don't even take your clothes off. So you, you'll see that it is a bit different. But if you train more with those of us that have trained traditionally or you go to Hawaii and train with them, you're definitely going to get a different taste of it than if you just go to a spa and you don't know, want to get a treatment. Um, even students of mine that have taken my classes will say, well, I can't bring this, this, and this into my spa setting. They won't let me chant. They won't let me pray. You know, they won't let me do this and this and this. So probably a little bit different. And does Lomi have kind of a religious or spiritual background then? I would say more spiritual. Um, although during the times of Auntie Margaret, um, when the missionaries came over, she was actually a Seventh-day Adventist. And so in her study, she did bring in Bible studies. Uh, Kahu Abraham, who was the one that uh, you know initiated the temple style Lomi, he was, his style was more pre-Christianity. But when you look at it all, um, what is base, What is basic in there is really the love and the compassion, the kindness, um, which is universal. Okay. And then what do your workshops entail then? Well, I have a variety of them. I have a, a two-day intro class, which is basically that. It's kind of talking about some of the things we're talking about and introducing you to some of the, the martial art movements and the dance movements um, so that you can flow easier around the table. It's introducing you how to use a forearm technique. Then there's the five-day, which, you know, obviously we cover a lot more and work on more uh, for yourself and the whole process of the journey. Um, with that whole, those two questions, who are you and why are you here? And, um, and of course, you know, they learn how to do a session on the full body, but that is not the end of it. And the people that resonate with this work, they really find out that taking a class over, taking it again and again, deepens their understanding of what this journey is about, what their process of healing is about. And then eventually they find themselves integrating all these different techniques as the body needs them. Um, I do have a 10-day uh, training in Kauai every year um, this October, which is already sold out. So I'm very blessed on that. And we also get to experience some of the culture. I invite in you know, one or two of the Hawaiian kumu. Um, sometimes they're teaching language. Sometimes they're teaching the Hawaiian crafts. Sometimes we're visiting sacred sites. And, and learning about their history, which is so, so important. Um, you know, somewhere in one of the books, many books I have read, there was something about um, until you step on the land and feel the sacredness, until you breathe the breath of, of the Hawaiians, they, you know, they don't consider you really a Lomi practitioner. And then a question in the chat, uh, must the two-day course be done before the five-day course? Not necessarily, however, I have found those that do both um, actually are more prepared for the five-day class, but it's not necessary. It's not, not a prereq. It is going to be a prereq for I am uh, releasing a Lomi Fusion class this year, and in that Lomi Fusion class, it is going to require that you have a minimum of a two-day uh, Lomi class. Okay. And what kind of lubrication do people usually use in Hawaii or um, over here and stuff for... Um, for Lomi Lomi, then. Mention that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, coconut and macadamia nut oils were what were on the islands, and so that's what they used. And Bone Vital now has coconut oil. Mm -hmm. So my students get to work with the Bone Vital coconut oil. And what's nice about this, especially here on the mainland, because it's fractionated, it doesn't solidify, whereas regular coconut oil will. And if you live in a cold environment, you know, you can constantly have to heat it. The other thing I have found, too, and so have my students, is that some people say, well, what if I have an allergy? Well, I've talked to some people that have coconut allergies that have used this, and they said it hasn't bothered them. So something in the process of breaking down the fats, which I'm hoping to find out from Bowen by the How, yeah. is actually helping um, with however it's assimilated into people's bodies. And if you don't like oil or if your client doesn't like oil, then you can pick one of those wonderful creams that are out there. That's fine. Uh, lotion doesn't quite work all the time when you're trying to do the full long strokes. 
Um, but it's okay when you're doing spot therapy. And then, um, you know, for the feet, I actually use your foot balm. You know, I, I love the, the wonderful fragrances that it has. My clients love it. And so it's very emollient, obviously. And this is a good product to use on the feet. We also do sometimes, um, what I do um, is I'll get a foot bath and I'll soak the feet in some essential oils. And if I have fresh flowers, I put the flowers in the foot bath. And then I'll take some sea salts and I'll scrub their feet with sea salts because that's also part of traditionally what in Lomi what they would do is actually a whole detoxification program first. You would um, maybe do changes in diet and have herbs. You do steams and salts. So a lot of us don't have you know that luxury. So I do I do a little bit. I do the feet and maybe a full body salt scrub, but at least the feet. And um, and that's a nice way to start and get your client to relax as well. Yeah, and I just recently got back from the Philippines, and um, what, the main oil I saw there was coconut oil. And it was a lot of times it was homemade, and it was in jars and stuff. And uh, yeah. did you bring me some back? Mm, yeah. <laughs> can't bring any of that stuff back. <laughs> Customs. Yeah, I, I love the coconut oil. It's really good for the skin. It's good for the hair. When I'm there, I put it in my hair so it doesn't frizz out like Bozo the Clown. Um, it's got some great, great properties. And most people like it. You know, a lot of times students will say, oh, I don't want to work with oil. It's too messy. It's too slippery. But if you learn how to work with it properly, it's not. And you still get your, you still can get your connection with the tissue. You just got to learn how to appropriately apply it and don't keep putting too much. And um, typically, do you use a little bit more oil or um, lubrication for Lomi, Lomi treatments compared to others? Um, that just depends, you know. Um, it depends on the client's. Skin, if it's dehydrated or not. Um, I personally don't use a whole lot more than I do in other techniques. I've had to learn to adjust it in the beginning when we're all practicing. Everybody's, you know, buying that oil and thinking they got to slip and slide. And you don't necessarily need that much. Um, it's just like when you're learning Swedish and how to adjust it, you'll get, you'll get it down. Okay. <laughs> I remember you were drenched with oil. Yeah, yeah, big time. <laughs> But that's why I have no hair, so it doesn't get all over. <laughs> One of the other things that I, I want to mention, too, uh, if anybody's interested in Lomi and, and what the whole Hawaiian culture really brings to it, is this book that I always recommend, The Wise Secrets of Aloha, that was written by Kahu Hari Uheni Jim, who actually was just at my place doing a workshop on Ho'oponopono, which is to make things right. Um, it's a process of forgiveness. And in here, one of the things that he says what you can expect as a Lomi Lomi giver, your belief system will change. Your power as witness of grace receiving gratitude will come through the shift of your belief system. Your comfort zone will expand. And I could tell you that one because I used to be someone in all my trainings and when I had my massage school, you know, you had a protocol, you had step by step, do this, do that, and this is why. And in this work, you really have to trust and allow yourself to get out of that box. So. I've expanded in more ways than one. <laughs> um, your emotional body will evolve so as to communicate with you, and that's what I'm talking about. You kind of get out of, of this way, and you listen on a whole new level. Uh, you will radiate healing. You will manage uh, energy through three states of consciousness, asleep, awake, and aware. And he goes on and on and lists many things. Um, so this is a really good book if you're interested in Lomi and you want to find out more, you know, you could read about that. And then table, massage tables over there, um, would you say most practitioners have them over there now or? Oh yeah, um, okay. yeah, most do, um, but I've seen Lomi on the beach, on a, on a beach mat, I've seen Lomi, like I said, on a, a chair, I've seen Lomi uh, done on a, a big rock, you know, uh, so you're not limited, but yeah. They, they have tables now. They've kind of gotten up far with us. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, in the Philippines, the only time I ever saw a massage table was in the fancy resorts. Otherwise, it was mostly all, all done in a chair, regular chair or yeah, on the floor uh, or at somebody's bed. So, Wow. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, that's, that's the wonderful thing about it. Lomi is, is not limited, you know, to being done on a table at all. Um, I had a student in one of my classes that was observing because it was uneven at that point in time and so I didn't want her to feel gypped that she couldn't get some Lomi so while she was sitting in the chair I went and did some of the Lomi in there and she was like whoa what happened because again you know it's really about the level of what we're communicating through our touch and not just the technique so we can do that anywhere.
And how typically long is the length of the treatments in Hawaii for Lomi Lomi? It varies. Um, temple style is, is usually about two hours, but Lomi could be five or ten minutes. You know, whatever someone needs, you know, for healing, for love, compassion, you know. And again, remembering it's not just the body work. You know, it might just be listening to somebody, you know, and, and letting them just emote and get things out. And that sometimes, you know, could take five hours. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, years ago, you and, and this I, I did this, I experienced it this way, you might, Kahuna might be in town, and you might be in somebody's garage setting, and the whole neighborhood is lined up, and then you get on the table, and he does his little pule, and he tunes into you, and boom, 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 everything's in alignment, and you're done, and that takes, you know, less than 10 minutes. So it, it varies, um, and because there's so many tools that people use, you know, it's going to differ. On Oahu, Kumu Karen Le Aloha Carol teaches uh, shell therapy, healing with shells. And so she has the lineage and the knowledge of how the shells work and what they do for the body. And what I want to put out there is I'm by nature a skeptical person. I have to tell you that. And so every time I hear about these things that uh, not quite what we do here, I have to have it proof. And so I had had I had fallen on my tailbone and had a lot of pain and then I was obviously flying on a plane to get to Hawaii. So when she came to the class, she was gonna ask her volunteer, guess who was up front and center? Boom, right on the table. And uh, she began to take a shell, you know, similar to this, which is what they call a scraper, and working with off the body, the etheric field and clearing energy through there. And then she had this other big beautiful shell um, similar to this one but huge and she called it her Hoover vacuum and she took the section where it's open and she never touched my body she placed it over my tailbone and she began to pull the pain out and Brian I could feel it coming out and it was never ever there again so you know I'm like okay that was a fluke so then I was at a training, and I was talking to my students about it, and um, I got stung by a bee, and I'm allergic to bees. And so I'm thinking, oh, gosh, I don't have anything with me. And one of the students took one of the shells, and she says, well, how about I put it on the, on the bite while you talk? And I'm thinking, okay, before I go into shock here, okay. And as she was doing it, she says to me, um, Gloria, look down. The redness is gone. The swelling is gone. And she took the shell off, and all the venom had come out, too. So it took twice for me to be convinced, but nature has many healing tools, and um, I believe if you learn and you have the uh, the intention around it and the trust, it works. Will they use the shells um, like in Guoshua, like actually scraping too, or not? Um, no, I wasn't shown that way, um, but I would imagine that if it was needed and that was what they would got to do, they probably would. Uh, as Queen Karen you know, taught us that, you know, every shell she has found, too, is the shape of a different organ or part of the body. And so, you know, it kind of attracts itself to that. And then the other thing I want to say, too, is that when you learn how to use them, we actually cleanse the energy from this by putting them in a bowl of sea salt and getting that out. And one of the things I'll tell you, Ryan, she made us weigh it before we did our work and then weigh it after we did our work, and it was significantly heavier. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, a lot of us do hot stones. And so, guess where they, they do them too? Lava stones, obviously, are all over Hawaiian Islands and, and all over Indonesia. And so these were actually gifted to me by a kahuna. You're not allowed to, well, you can, but you supposedly have bad luck. You shouldn't take lava from the islands unless it's a gift. And one of the kahuna actually gifted me with three of these stones. And you can see there's actually a natural kind of indent in there where your thumb fits just wonderful. And there's another one in here. And he has used these in many, many healing sessions. And now what they would do is they would put them out in the sun because they work as much with nature and the elements of nature as possible. So they would put them out in the sun and for about 45 minutes or whatever's needed, and the stones would heat. And so it wouldn't just be laying on like you see in some of the beautiful pictures we have in our spas, but they would actually work, you know, with the stones. And this is where we can get some of our deep tissue work as well. Yeah, um, I've seen pictures of people like at the bottom of uh, volcanoes and stuff, there's huge piles of rocks just because people <laughs> <laughs> send them back and stuff. And <laughs> uh, thousands of pounds, hundreds of thousands of pounds.
pounds, yeah. Um, you know, Pele, the goddess Pele doesn't want you taking them, you know. But if they're gifted, that's a different different story. And so I haven't, I've had lots of good luck, so I can't, I can't say anything bad about my stones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing that we learn is about the bowl of light and um, – the Hawaiians believe we're all born with a bowl of light. You know, we're pure. And um, until we get involved in life and teachings and belief systems and negativity, things began to change. And so we try to stay as positive as we can, but we all know, you know, life shows up sometimes. So what they did is they came up with this um, idea. It's in a book, actually, uh, Tales of the Night Rainbow by Polly J. Lee, uh, where you, you get a bowl. You know, any size bowl, but don't get too big, you know. And um, and you get some stones. And every time you have a negative thought throughout the day, you place it in your bowl. And, you know, you could be driving, you know, on a highway somewhere and getting aggravated with somebody because they cut you off. Well, when you get home, you're going to put a stone in your bowl, okay? <laughs> or you might wake up in the morning and say, oh, it's raining. And then you realize you started your day out negative-wise, so you put another stone in your bowl. But the wonderful thing that they also created is at the end of the night, when you look at this, and, you know, it might have a... <laughs> <laughs> it's stones, right? At the end of the night, you pull it, you turn it over, and you get rid of all those stones. So every morning, you wake up with a bowl of light. And it's a really good tool, and it's great for kids, too, because it makes you very mindful of... When you pick that stone up and you think about your thought that you had that was negative, you'll think twice before you do it again. How big of bowls have you seen people have? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some big ones, but, you know, most people don't go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any spa modalities that they um, use over in the, the Hawaii that you've seen? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I mean, for example, your, your hot stones, your sea salts, your steams. The herbs, they will take, um, you know, the different herbal remedies if you've learned that. Like noni has got uh, wonderful healing properties, and they take the big leaf, and they'll have the stone that's heated up, and they might wrap the leaf around it, and then the steam is going to take the medicine out. Or they might make poultices out of it. They might do body scrubs. They will get the, the muds, the clays deep down in the soil. Uh, we went to one of the beaches, uh, the salt pond, they call it, where the natural sea salts come in. And if you dig about maybe a foot or so down into the sand, there's actually the natural clays. And so you can use them on your body as a clay treatment. So, yeah, you'll see all kinds of things. And uh, um, some of those, are they considered um, part of Lomi Lomi then, or are they kind of oh, separate? Absolutely. Okay. Everything from nature is comes into Lomi Lomi. Okay. <laughs> everything. And that's what that was their tools. You know, traditionally that's what they used. They looked at everything around the Aina. That's where their studies all began. What what is nature teaching you? And every single thing in nature was used. Even sticks. You know, when I took my Lomi training, we spent um, a day in total silence in the woods and we had to go find our tree. <laughs> And then when we found our tree that was talking to us, we had to find our branch from the tree that we were able to cut down. We had to ask permission. And then we took that branch and we went back and in silence, we began to carve it in silence and pray, do our pule. And the prayers would go into, it was a guava, guava stick. And then you got to use them. You know that device that's like shaped like an S that you hook over you and you got those acupressure points? Yep, therapy. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's similar to that, that you could use it as a, a self-tool, or if you just had one long branch, it's similar to like what they're doing with bamboo fusion and rolling it and using it as acupressure points. So the Hawaiians were considered very efficient, and they utilized everything they could in nature because they believed the healing properties of nature. And where do you, what kind of things do you have planned in the near future then? Well, I just completed um, actually some Aloha message cards. Um, started out just as a little fun of taking the word Aloha, which each letter means something different. Um, for example, um, we have this one here, ha Ahaha, which is humility. And, and I put, it is not the words we say, it is how the heart is expressed. And after I did the five letters, a whole bunch more of inspirational messages came through. So with um, the help of one of my students, Candy, uh, she had a previous lifetime as a graphic designer, 
she's helped put these cards together and a lot of the photography is mine, some is hers and a few of our students have contributed as well. So those are getting released and we're really excited about those because it's a great way too for students to learn the language. Um, it's a wonderful, like everybody you know that is into cards and they pull their their card for the day or whatever. They might have a message for themselves through the cards. And they're just, they're really pretty. We're going to put them in a, like a book too so that you could have it in your waiting room that maybe your clients can look through it as well. Oh, that'd be gorgeous to do yeah. that. You know. <laughs> and you can even do a, like reminder um, to get a massage um, for your clients and stuff yeah. too. It would be yeah. ideal. So we're going to work on a few other projects. We have a few other ideas. Uh, in our brain going around, you know, that whole ADD thing we always talk about, it's not nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other thing too, um, you know, in combination with doing my retreats, I've also been realizing that massage therapists, you know, don't necessarily take enough time for themselves to, to be, get well or be well or continue, you know, um, putting themselves number one. As caregivers, we're always going to put ourselves, you know, a little bit lower. And so I'm also working on some wellness retreats, too, that won't necessarily be studies all the time. It's going to be it's going to be about you. <laughs> and that actually is going to be, you know, based in all this stuff that I've learned because it has really taught me so much more about wellness. And um, do you have any books on the horizon or videos or anything? Or um, Not videos yet. Um, I'm really, my, my belief, my, my soul belief that until I'm given permission by the Hawaiian, the Kupuna, to put a video of that nature together, I will wait. Um, I will have informational ones, cultural ones, probably in the near future. But as far as the technique, um, I'm going to honor that system right now. Okay, definitely. Uh, um, there's another book I'd like to tell students about too that is out there. It's called Change We Must by Nana Beery. And this is a wonderful book. Um, it's about her story of her life. And, and basically, you know, she was also a Lomi teacher. Everything that she experienced from her religious background to moving away from that to going metaphysical to exploring Buddhism and then bringing everything full circle, which is what's really beautiful about this work. Um, I have found not only for myself, but for a lot of my students, too, that if we have been brought up with some religious beliefs that we feel are in conflict with this spiritual lifestyle, we soon find out that they actually meld very well together and that they actually support a lot of the belief systems people were brought up with but didn't totally understand. So Nana kind of talks about that in her, her book and her life journey, and that's another good one to have. And then if anybody had Massage Magazine last year, the March issue, um, I had a Lomi Lomi article in there, and this one was actually um, the opportunity that I got to interview several of the Hawaiian Kumu, the teachers, and the Kapuna on their take on what Lomi Lomi is all about. Okay, awesome. And, uh, and then you typically go once a year then to do trainings, or are you going to be doing more then? Or? Um, once or twice a year, um, I do it. You know, it depends on the need and the calling. I'd love to be there twice a year. Sometimes we do them twice a year. I'm already taking registrations for the following year already because it, it, Lomi is becoming popular in the sense that people are realizing at first that, oh, it's a modality that won't be as stressful on my body. And so they have uh, more skills not to be in pain. But then after they realize that it's not just that light, fluffy stroke, um, they realize, wow, there's so much that integrates in this. And then when they realize, wow, I can go to Hawaii too, uh, the idea of having a vacation is very appealing, obviously. But then when they get the whole cultural aspect and they really feel what this is all about on another level, it's just truly amazing. And I see the difference in people. I see the difference in myself when I go there, but I definitely see the difference in the students when they come on day one and 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 they Okay. And then, are, is anybody, um, where can people see you in person this year? Let's see. I'm going to be in Atlanta, Georgia this weekend, and then I'll be in Moorhead City, North Carolina next weekend, and then St. Louis, Missouri at the end of the month. And uh, let's see. I'm with South Dakota. We have a training in South Dakota outside of Rapid City, which still has a couple spaces left. And I'm doing an advanced training of Lomi up in the Sun Coast of Vancouver. And, um, 
of course, Kauai. I'm going to be in Hawaii for about six weeks, and I'm also going back to do some studies there too. So I'll have I'll have more in my my toolbox real soon. So you're constantly on the go then all the time, right? <laughs> not constantly, not as much as people think I am. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But when I am, I'm gone for periods of time, and then I come back, and that's where I find the, the balance, the lokahi for myself, where I spend time, you know, with family, with grandkids, with having some joy in my life, and going out in nature, too. And a question in the chat, um, what do you feel like after receiving your first Lomi Lomi session? Wow, I actually wrote an article like that for Massage Today. Um, I transcended time and space. My first Lomi Lomi session, um, I would consider happened after my massage training because when you're in trainings you know things feel good but it it doesn't really give you the full benefit because you know you're thinking about what you have to do and you're in a learning process i actually received my first session a couple weeks after my month-long training and it was by a gentleman from switzerland and he had been studying for 11 years and i found out that day that he actually wasn't a massage therapist he was an accountant by nature thinking of becoming a massage therapist and I was like, whoa. <laughs> and, um, and so he, he gifted me this session. And I, what, what, what was most significant for me at first was he took time to create sacred space within himself and within his room for almost an hour. So what I found out later on is actually not only was he clearing energy, but he was praying. And then what was so powerful is when he came out, to, to get me, he didn't get me, he received me. And in that moment, I knew something was different. And then I went to the table and he did his pule, he did his chant. And in that moment, the vibration of his chant broke through something, I can't even describe it, that transcended time and space. And honestly, I was gone, gone for three hours. In, when he completed the session, he was standing at the end of the table waiting to get feedback because he was thinking of going to massage school. And I said, don't go to massage school. And does anybody know why? <laughs> um, and he began to cry. And I said to him, no, 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 don't cry. They can't give you what you have right here in your heart. And it was truly the most amazing massage. And I've had thousands up until that point the most amazing massage I had ever had. And I knew also in that moment I had to go study more, that my training was not complete. So for the next two years, I went and studied more. And, you know, and I already had over 15 years of massage behind me at that time. And then he was coming back to the island with his girlfriend, and he wanted to know if he can you know, rent a room that I had. And I said, well, no, I have a studio, but when are you coming? And I was going to be off island, so I said, yeah, you can have my studio. And he says, well, how much? And I said, a lonely session. And when I came back and he gave me my Lomi session, it was completely different because I was in a different space and he was in a different space. And then I realized then, guess what? I had to go back and learn more. Oh, so you're, it's never ending, just like doctors are always practicing, right? Yeah, we're always practicing, absolutely. And um, it's always going to be different. And so for me, it is truly amazing. You know, I had recently had one of my newer students, I was watching her in class, and she wound up in massage school not because she wanted to go for herself. She was going to help her daughter study because her daughter has some learning disabilities. And in the process, she fell in love with the work. And she came to take five-day Lomi class before she even got her license. And I watched her. And I knew she's going to be one of my therapists. I'm going to go pay for this. And when I when I told her that, she says, oh, no, no, I can't work on you. I don't even have a license yet. I said, yeah, you can. And she says, no, 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 no. She says, I, I haven't studied this enough. And I said, you have something that I see and I feel when you're working on people. And it's beyond the technique. Because you have this level of, of compassion and kindness and connection in your heart space that you don't always see in every massage session. And so I did. I went and booked a session with her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, the main thing is, too, to get regular treatments. That's what a lot of massage therapists forget about is taking care of them, their, own, their own selves. So. You know, I tell my students all the time, you know, just because you got off the table in a Lomi class and it felt really wonderful and a lot of them, they like flowed off the table and they're spaced out seriously for hours. I said, you know, this is not all it is. This is a classroom setting and you have felt this. Now go and get one from someone that's really experienced and skilled so that you really get it. 
And even when I go back to Kauai or any of the islands, I always go get a session because I want to see ooh, what, what else, you know. And I find it really is the deepening of the connection and the awareness that we have to really fine tune in our skills more than anything. And it, do you get, um, do you give them a lot of self help things um, during the trainings? So absolutely, yeah. you know, a huge part of it is learning how to use your body mechanics correctly. You know, and so we spend a lot of time, you know, in movement, in um, learning how to use your tools, okay, and how to work around the table easier. And then anytime somebody wants to get a hold of you, you're always on Facebook, 24 seven. I'm always so. on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, they can get a hold of me at massageproce at gmail.com. And if you're looking specifically for Lomi trainings, um, I have a Lomi website other than my main Massage Pro CE website that has trainings for other instructors as well who work along with me. Um, but I have a Lomi Lomi Massage CE dot com uh, website, and that's where you can find the Aloha parts too if you want to purchase those. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you very much, Gloria, and it's always a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank yeah. you, Bon Vital, yeah. for this opportunity. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, too. Have a great day. Yep.